Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you to today's Mass of Announcements. The Pastoral Council election has concluded and results have been tabulated. Dina Villa and Luis Del Huera have been elected to serve a three-year term beginning in January 2021. Alternates are John Solano and Trey Tolan. To the council, seat be vacated between January 2021 and the next election. Alternates will be contacted to fill the empty seats. The council would like to extend our gratitude to all those who participated. And special thanks to the election committee for helping us successfully complete another election cycle. La elección del Consejo Pastoral ha concluido y los resultados han sido tabulados. Dina Villa y Lupi de Luera han sido elegidos para cumplir un mandato de tres años a partir del enero de 2021. Los suplentes son John Solano y Trey Cohen. Si un escaño de consejo es disputado entre enero de 2021 y la próxima elección, se contactará, contactará a los suplentes para llenar ese asiento vacío. El Consejo desea extender nuestra gratitud a todos los que participaron. Agradecimiento especial del Comité Electoral para ayudarnos a completar con éxito otro ciclo electoral. And those of you for the first time here during Mass, just a reminder that communion will not be observed during the Mass. It will be observed as we are leaving Mass. And we're asking that you stay in the same lines that you did as you're being seated to practice safe distancing. And even if you are not receiving communion for everyone to please exit to the side doors. If you're apart on this side, if you're seated over here, we have to please go behind the church to get to your vehicle, or vice versa, you're seated on this, this side, or parked on this side, go behind the church to get to your vehicle so we may leave the front free from any kind of traffic because we will be distributing communion at the front and we would like to keep it as early as possible. Also, during the sign of peace, if you're seated with family members, you may exchange peace in any way you wish, handshake, hug, however, but for those that are sitting around you, we ask you please do not extend any kind of physical sign of peace to one another. Just a simple wave or a simple bow would be too good. The restrooms are not open at this time. And also, we ask you that you please receive communion by hand only and not through the mouth because just for safe distancing. So please receive communion only by hand. And also, communion will be distributed afterwards for those that are online from 12, 11.45 to 12 o'clock. Thank you for your cooperation. One more announcement. There will be a Thanksgiving Mass Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning here at Immaculate Heart of Mary. Thank you.
and he wants to rule with love and compassion. And we pray that we'll be able to live out uh, his, his uh, commandment of love and compassion uh, to one another. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Al final, 
contra todo se le haya sometido, Cristo mismo se someterá al Padre. Y así Dios será todo en todas las cosas. Palabra de Dios.
But dear friends, today is the last Sunday of the church liturgical year. And next Sunday, uh, we start with, we start the Advent Sunday with the first Sunday in Advent. And today, we also celebrate the beautiful solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Our common image of a king is one who rules with power, with money, with control, with his army. Jesus is a different kind of king. Uh, Jesus is the kind of king Prophet Ezekiel uh, describes in the first reading. He is the one who rescues the scattered, seeks out the lost, brings back the stray, binds up the injured and heals the sick. You know, he is, as what the psalmist uh, tells us today, the good shepherd you know, who rules by his love, by his tender mercy and compassion, who leads his flock to restful waters and abundance. Now this is the image that the Lord shows us in the gospel today. As king, uh, the Lord cares with what Martin Luther King Jr. called the least, the lost, and the last. He is the one who searches out the stranger, the hungry, the imprisoned, the naked, and the needy. He identifies, he identifies himself with them and his identity with them is thought of. I am the hungry one. I am the jailed one. I am the sick one. You soy el hambriento. You soy el encarcelado. You soy el enfermo. Amen. I say to you, whatever you did for, the, for one of the least brothers of mine, you did it for me. Now those are uncomfortable words, distressing words, disconcerting words, because we know that many times we have fallen short in actually doing them. And it accu those words ac accuse us. Now, and so today's gospel on the solemnity of Christ the King calls us to see Christ and to recognize our King in the needy, in the least, the last, and the lost. And Jesus invites us, as Pope Francis would, uh, would uh, usually say, to the outskirts and to join Jesus to stand at the margins. He also alerts us to the importance of compassion. Christ the King asks us to make simple acts of charity and deeds of mercy. And during this time of pandemic, when we see more and more people, uh, we heard more and more people, uh, some others are friends and relatives, getting sick, there's plenty of opportunities to be considerate and to be charitable. To, to do acts of mercy. Uh, true love, Jesus tells us, feeds the poor and welcomes the immigrant from the homeless. And so he's calling each of us to be faithful in little ways, in doing little acts of love. And, and so we, the gospel encourages us to ask ourselves, what dominates our lives? What reigns our hearts? Who rules our minds? Who controls or what controls our desires and emotions? and the things that we do. And we are encouraged once again to look into ourselves 
and uh, to allow this king to rule our hearts with his compassion and his love. And Jesus here makes one thing very clear. He will judge everyone by the basic criteria of active compassion and practical love. Love that is to be lived in our daily lives, in the personal circumstances of our daily lives, in the imitation to the life of our King, our Lord Jesus Christ. In closing, at the end of times, we are uh, we are we are reminded that Christ, the King, sitting on His throne, will give our final exam. And it must be very clear to us how God will judge us on the last day. Now, I would, I would like to share with you an article about this final exam. It goes this way. God won't ask how many fancy clothes you have in your closet. He will ask how many of those clothes you gave, gave away to those who didn't have any. God won't ask how many material possessions you have. He will ask whether those material possessions dictated your life. God won't ask what your highest salary was. He will ask if you trampled over any people to obtain that salary. God will ask how much overtime you worked. He will ask, did you work overtime for your family? God will ask what your parents did to help you. He will ask what you did to help your parents. God will ask what you did to help yourself. He will ask what you did to help others. God will ask how many friends you have. He will ask how many people to whom you were a friend. God will ask what you did to protect your rights. He will ask what you did to protect the right, the rights of others. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of made, from substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious island. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord God told Ezekiel, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. Assured of God's loving care, we bring our needs and the needs of others before our Lord. For the church, that we may hasten our work to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, and comfort the neglected. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. That world leaders may be inspired by Jesus' call to care for the least ones among us, and develop policies and laws that show compassion to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For the most vulnerable, those living in the peripheries of society, the forgotten, the overlooked, the abandoned,
that they may find comfort and dignity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are seeking the Lord in today's complicated world, that they may see the face of Christ reflected in the goodness and mercy of those who serve others in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all of us celebrating Thanksgiving this week, in thanksgiving to God for all the blessings we have received this past year, let us pray to the Lord. For our parishioners living and deceased, let us pray to the Lord. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, you care for us dearly, rescuing us when we are lost, binding us when we are hurt, healing us when we are ill, shepherding us when we need guidance. Graciously hear the prayers we make and grant them in the name of your Son and our King, Jesus Christ. Kingdom of truth and life, 
a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave him thanks. He said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your golden church on earth with your servants, Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Please stand for the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe you that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask the Lord that glory in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.